Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. Now, I apologise profusely because I'm currently down with the flu and I've been down with the flu for at least a couple of days now. Uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better, but I needed to get some of these videos uh, out of the door, so to speak. So I hope you don't mind listening to my voice like this. Um, but if you do, then please turn the volume down. So we had our most recent uh, meetup at the UK South Fountain Pen Club uh, in December 2018 and uh, with typical British weather it was quite a wet and a windy day. Uh, we we had this really lovely uh, a glowing, uh, roaring fire going, which was really keeping us warm. Uh, and then uh, also some beer on tap or, or in bottles. But but uh, for me, because I was driving, it's zero percent beer. But it's uh, I I decided to switch to Heineken uh, beer for for the this uh, uh, meet up. Now, being December, uh, there are typically not a lot of pens that are purchased, um, at least for myself and I think also really from other members of the club. Uh, we tend to be either buying pens for ourselves for Christmas and putting them away, or uh, we're buying other Christmas presents. So a lot of our extra money uh, that we would spend on pens and pen accessories tends to be a little bit more limited. But there were still a few uh, fountain pens pens and, and cases and, and that that were on display at the pen club. So here you can see uh, three uh, Goulet uh, pen wraps here and I did an unboxing review of these. I got these from Goulet. Uh, these are the six pen wrap or roll and then the 12 pen wrap or roll. Now the six pen wrap um, I, I do like. Um, it's not a closed off uh, at the top, um, so pens uh, are not protected at the top, uh, but it does roll up quite tightly, and the, the slots for each pen uh, do tend to be quite narrow. Uh, so if you have quite wider pens, you'll find that they will be quite snug inside this. Uh, but I do love this, this case. Uh, and there's also this 12 pen wrap, which gives a little bit more protection, it has this sort of like suede inner lining uh, to keep your pen soft uh, and uh, it seems to be that the pens have a little bit more room uh, in uh, the, the slots here on the 12 pen case versus the 6 pen case. Although I think the slots are similar in, in, in um, width but uh, it just seems to be a little bit more generous there. So I had these um, fountain pen cases uh, on display uh, at the uh, pen club. Uh, I also uh, brought a number of uh, my pens with me as well. So I will go through these um, left to right. Here we have some of my Atelier Lusso pens uh, and I have two Carinas with me here and four Andromedas. So left to right we have the Carina Black Ice, the Carina Diamond Nebula, the Andromeda King Cobra, the Andromeda Dragon, the Andromeda Tectonic Seas and the Andromeda Vulcan's Forge. And then here were another eight pens that I brought with me and, and one of these pens is a new pen that I haven't reviewed yet and this is the Pilot Vanishing Point or in Europe it's called the Capless and this is the 2017 edition Crimson Sunrise and I picked that up recently with a broad uh, 18 karat gold nib uh, I wanted a broader nib I already have a black with gold trim uh, pen uh, Vanishing Point uh, with a, with a, a fine nib which acts more like a, a Western Extra Fine so I really wanted either a medium or a broad nib and uh, there was only one available in, and it was a broad nib so I, I um, decided to purchase that one. And then there's the Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove um, and this is a, a really stunning pen with this um, Shiny Lines Stack Celluloid uh, beautiful stunning pen and it writes really well. And then we have uh, four Armando Simone Club uh, Bologna Extras. And these are quite large pens. I have the Wild Side, 
and I have an Arco Verde in gold and rhodium trim, and then I have an Arco Brown there in the rose gold trim. And then uh, a Leonardo Mediterraneo, uh, and, and this uh, it has a 14 karat gold nib, uh, and writes very nicely, along with a, a stipula uh, Corsani Etruria, uh, and again, that has a 14 karat gold nib, uh, quite flexy compared to the Leonardo, uh, and it's, it's a lovely writer. And then here's another eight pencil I brought along with me, and it's the uh, some of these uh, you have seen before, or I have done unboxing reviews. Uh, these tend to be some of my um, pens that I tend to like a lot more. Um, these are uh, the Visconti Camelot on the far left, the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, the Visconti Istos Arachnis, the Visconti Ecstasy Dowd. The Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Swirl, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi in red, and then I have the Classic Pens LM1 in Flame Red, or KN, and the Classic Pens LB5, uh, and this is the Kalseki version, or colour. Gary brought along uh, another pen, and I'm not entirely sure if this was a new acquisition or or if it's just one I've never seen Gary bring to either the the UK South Pen Club or the London Pen Club but uh, I, I certainly haven't seen this one before uh, and uh, I, I to be honest I have never seen this pen uh, out in uh, the wild or even online um, but this is a Lamy pen and it's a Lamy accent uh, it had a really lovely um, medium 14 karat gold nib and uh, I'm really uh, starting to like these Lamy gold nibs. Uh, Gary has quite a number of uh, Lamy um, gold uh, nib pens. And uh, although I'm not really a fan of some of these, um, I I really like how they write. And um, the, the strange thing is with, with this Lamy accent is it comes with this uh, wood um, sort of uh, section there. Uh, and you can actually uh, disassemble pretty much the whole of the pen, uh, as you can see uh, in, in this photo here. Uh, and uh, it really actually uh, is is uh, quite amazing. It's um, so, so you can actually change that wood section for another section if you wanted to, in theory. Maybe if you had other Lamy Accent pens, then you could maybe swap those over. As you can see, it's a cartridge converter pen. Um, but uh, that 14 karat gold nib wrote really, really well. And then Jackie brought uh, a new acquisition with her. And this was uh, the um, Parker IM. And this had a medium nib. And I've seen these online before. Um, I I have a, a Parker um, Duofold Centennial, which I really do love. It's quite a, an oversized pen. It's a girthy pen. It's quite wide in diameter. Um... But it's a really lovely pen to write with. And and I found that this Parker IM was too, uh, in a medium nib. Um, but I tend not to go for the the, the slimmer pens. Um, but I do love the the um, pattern on uh, this Parker IM. And, uh, and although it has like a, a smaller number 5 nib on it, um, I, I actually do like that it may even actually be a number four nib it, it was uh i think similar to my um waterman hemisphere nib in terms of size um but it, it could be a, a 4.5 or a 5 nib i'm not too sure um i've not really looked at these uh parker ims but it wrote very nicely um uh, so so uh i think jackie uh likes a pen and 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 wanted to acquire it and add it to her collection. And then I have my uh, Visconti Ecstasy Dowd. Uh, and this is a, a stunning pen. And um, unfortunately, uh, it has a push-pull uh, piston on it. And uh, for, for filling, you, you push it the piston in to um, expel air or ink. And then you pull it out to suck in ink. Um, and unfortunately, it had been leaking for a few months. Uh, and... 
Uh, but I have managed to repair that, have that repaired. So uh, that now is not leaking. So it's now back in my rotation again. And I have it inked up with Diamine Majestic Purple, which I absolutely love as an ink. And I also have the Visconti Istos Arachnis, and this is always a controversial pen because at the end of the day, not everybody likes spiders, and to be honest, I don't like spiders either. Um, but I do like the pen, and um, uh, it, it, it is a lovely pen. Uh, it, this is a power vac filler, uh, and it's it, it writes very well. It has a medium nib on it, a uh, 23 cap palladium nib, uh, just like the Ecstasy Dowd, and that's a medium nib too. Uh, but it writes very wet and and very juicy. And then there was the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. Uh, and this is one of my workhorse pens now. Uh, it's a stunning pen. It's very heavy, around 70 grams in weight, made of solid silver and solid marble. But it's a beautiful pen with a 23 cap medium nib that I did have to work on to in increase the ink flow. Now it writes just how I want it to write. And it's a beautiful pen. And here you can see our pens out on the table here with uh, with drinks, waiting for food to arrive. And uh, we're just talking really about uh, uh, our acquisitions and testing each other's pens out. Jackie uh, also um, has been waiting for a long time uh, to get uh, her new uh, Tatcha. Uh, uh, and she already has a winter's breath. And uh, this is the Autumn's Brushes. Uh, and this is a Mackie pen by Tatcha. And this is uh, uh, featuring a uh, Sailor um uh, nib branded Tatcha, uh, and she decided because she loves st uh, stub nibs uh, and very broad nibs. Uh, she decided to go with effectively a Sailor Music nib on this one, and oh boy, this is a really, really wide and wet writer. Um, it's juicy wet, uh, but the pen itself uh, has lovely, um, like um, orange, autumny, brownie sort of bronzy, uh, like burnishing going on here on the end with with little sort of uh subtle stripes of Raden going through the material uh it really is a stunning pen um out of the two though i think i still would prefer the uh winter's breath um but you can see here the material it's almost like a, a popcorn like bubbling effect going on um it, it really is a, a stunning looking pen um so uh she had a very long wait for this um but uh it's finally arrived and then here you can see the uh autumn's brushes next to her winter's breath and i think you can see why i like the winter's breath a little bit more uh it is is a much uh for me it's a much more nicer looking or or flamboyant looking pen uh with the uh, quails the crushed quails eggs uh and a lot more rodent stripes going on there but it but both pens are really nice looking pens they're both cartridge converter pens um and and i think that autumn's brush because it has a music nib is really going to burn through ink So I think I will try not bore you much more uh, with my voice because my voice is starting to go a little bit again. So uh, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody that has uh, attended uh, the UK South Fountain Pen Club over um, the the last sort of uh, uh, four or five months. Uh, it's it's been a really good uh, attendance. Uh, I'm very amazed that, um, uh, that I was able to pull this off and uh, create a fountain pen club that people would want to come to on, on a regular basis and uh, just want to say thanks to everybody that has attended and likewise everybody that, that likes watching these videos too um, we really do enjoy getting together every month uh, whether or not it's at the UK South Fountain Pen Club or the London Fountain Pen Club and uh, it's really good to be able to uh, 
experience new pens, uh, play around with, with pens that either you wouldn't maybe add to your collection or or maybe even sort of discover pens that you never knew existed. Very much like the, the Lamy um, for me, the um, Lamy accent. So um, I think it, it, it's great if you could get yourself off to a fountain pen club. Um, if you have one that's somewhat local to you, then try and get off to, to experience one because they really are a good place to experience new pens especially seeing that most of our retailers nowadays are online only so you can't get to test the pens so thanks uh, very much for watching this video and I again I apologize for my voice but uh, hopefully I will be able to get over this flu very soon uh, hopefully in time for Christmas as well um, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the channel and I will have a few more videos before the end of the year is up and I hope you will like those too. Thanks very much, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.